Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about some romance books that literally made me sob. Baby, baby. Some of my favorite romance books of all time are the ones that are able to pull that emotional response out of me, like sobbing, you know? So these are the books that have definitely made me sob like crazy. I'm very zero to 100 when it comes to like crying. So either a book will make me really sad and I'll like tear up a bit, but I won't like even like let a tear fall or I'm sobbing can't breathe because of a book. So these are all books that literally made me sob to a point where I couldn't breathe. So one of the authors that has without fail almost made me sob for every single one of her books is um, Sarah J Mass. okay? These are the two that I cry the most <laughs> from. And if you've read them, you know. Um, I'm not gonna talk about why these books made me cry because, um, spoilers, but there's literally a vlog for me on my channel, um, like back in, I wanna say 2019 I read this. This came out in 2019, 2019. I have a reading vlog of me reading this book and full on, you can see me sob uncontrollably because of a certain scene in this book that broke me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this book made me cry many times. If you don't know, this is the last book in the Throne of Glass series. The beginning of the series reads more YA, then it gets to more adult. I would say from Queen of Shadows to this point, they're all adult slash new adult books and everything before that is young adult. Um, so I consider this to be an adult romance novel, but you need to read the first books to obviously get to this point. This book, if you've read it, you know, you know, it broke me many times because of many people doing certain things. I can't say anything else, okay? Um, so yeah, this book is everything. If you wanna literally see me sob over this book, that vlog will be down below. I hate it, but I bet you would love me losing my mind. <laughs> One of the funniest stories I've ever had about crying over a book comes from this because this book came out my senior year of high school, finals week of my senior year of high school. And um, I literally had a sobbing meltdown in one of my school hallways because um, of something that happened that nobody was really seeing. Books also end in happily ever afters, by the way. All these books do. I forgot to mention that. All these books end in the HEA. I would not consider them to be a romance book if they did not, okay? It all worked out in the end, but there was one point in here that I broke down sobbing literally in the school hallway. Everyone looked at me like I was nuts. Thank goodness it was like the theater hallway. And so like, there's only theater kids around us and they see a crying girl, it's normal in the theater hallway, you know? My best friend and I were reading this at the same exact time and um, crying together. So, um, if you know, you know, you've read this, you know, this book broke me. I, of course, have read other Sarah J Mass books that has made me sob, but this isn't a Sarah J Mass video, so we're gonna leave it at those two. Next, I have the Full Tilt Duet by Emma Scott. And yes, this is a duet. This is not a romance book all on its own. You have to read the second book to get the HEA that you want, okay? This one essentially shattered my heart into a billion pieces, and this one very slowly put it back together. There's still a bunch of heartache in this one, but this is the one that literally, your heart is in a million pieces, and this book somehow is able to put all the shards together. Don't know how it happened, but it did. This book is about Casey and Jonah. Casey is a rock star, part of this band, also, by the way, I don't like celebrity romances. This is the exception because the celebrity aspect almost has literally nothing to do with this. So Casey is going through a really hard time in her life, okay? She's dealing a lot with, uh, I think it's alcoholism, um, an, an addiction to alcohol. And she gets rip roaring drunk one night after a performance and kind of like her bodyguard puts her in the limo that the band is using during tour. And Jonah happens to be the limo driver. Casey ends up blacking out drunk in the limo, completely passes out. The bodyguard tells Jonah to drive her home and she's alone, they're the only two in the car. And so Jonah goes to drive her to the house they've been staying at while on tour. It is dark, locked, no one is home. He's not gonna leave this girl alone on the porch, blackout drunk, obviously. And so he's like, the only other option is for her to come home with me. And so he brings her home, 
puts her on his couch. Next morning, Casey wakes up and realizes what happened. The two of them start to become friends and um, it grows into something more. Casey realizes that Jonah might be the right person to kind of like push her in the right direction towards living the life she's always wanted. Casey is kind of like the spark in Jonah's life he needed um, during this very hard time. Um, Jonah is going through a very traumatic illness. They kind of lean on each other during this time. And I can't really talk about what book two is, but um, if you end book one very upset, read book two. Even if you think you don't want it, you need it. Okay, you need it. Speaking of Emma Scott, we have forever right now. Emma Scott, if you want to cry, buckets, read Emma Scott's books. Her books will break you and put you back together. Like that's a common occurrence in her books. This is about Darlene and Sawyer. So Darlene just got out of, I believe, jail um, due to drug possession. Uh, her ex-boyfriend got her addicted to drugs. And um, once she is let out of jail, she never, ever, ever wants to return to that life. And so she's always had this dream of being a dancer in San Francisco. So that's what she decides to do. She decides to, after she gets out of jail, to go move to San Francisco to get her lifelong dream and to escape that horrible past, you know? And so while she's there, she ends up meeting her next door, not next door neighbor, below her, like below a floor in her apartment, uh, Sawyer, that's her neighbor Sawyer. And he is in college studying to become a lawyer and he is recently a single father. He has a little baby girl named Olivia who was left on his doorstep one night at a party. Like he was hosting a party, he was at a party. He opens the door, baby right there with the note with the mom saying i can't take care of her she's yours take her um he's obviously very shocked he's a party college boy and so you get to see him completely shift his priorities after he sees his baby and so darlene is trying so hard to become friends with sawyer and just like live her life to the fullest now um but she's kind of not being fully honest with him because of her past and she doesn't want to damage her relationship um a friendship at this point because of her past because that's not who she is anymore and Sawyer is very over overprotective of his daughter and who he chooses to be in his life because of his kid you know um because he is trying so hard to be a good parent and he doesn't want Olivia to get to attach to somebody that could just leave them and that's all I'm gonna say because anything else could be spoilery honestly I feel like any Emma Scott that you're gonna pick up is gonna break you Unfortunately, this one did, but in all the good right ways because this book is honestly phenomenal. It is no surprise that The Silent Waters by Brittany C. Cherry is on this list. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Brittany C. Cherry is honestly an author that I love, but I can't binge her books because I would become so depressed because of how her books make you feel. Like they will put every single emotion in your body in this in this amount of pages, you know? So this book starts out with Maggie as a little girl, our heroine. Her dad is getting remarried to this woman. And um, that woman has a son and a daughter already. And so Maggie and her dad get put into this family where Maggie now has a sister and a brother and a mom, um, which she has not had for the first, I wanna say six years of her life. And her now brother has a best friend named Brooks. And from the moment that she sees Brooks, she's like, I'm gonna marry him. And he's like, ew, gross, no, you're a girl, not marrying you. You don't like the typical kid thing, you know? She tells Brooks, hey, I planned our wedding. Let's go into the forest and we're gonna get married. And so <laughs> he's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Don't wait on me. Um, and so she does anyway, she goes to wait in the woods for him. When she's out there, she ends up witnessing something traumatic and something she should not have seen. And it, traumatizes her. From that point on, she doesn't speak at all. And this book also jumps to when they're older, um, when Maggie is still not speaking and her and Brooks have become friends and they have held this unrequited love for each other ever since then. And oh my gosh, this book is beautiful. There's nothing else I can really say. <laughs> I think this just, Brittany Stewart's writing is beautiful to a point where it makes me cry and just everything that Maggie goes through in here is emotional. It's relatable. It's 
sad. It just gives you all the feels. Pretty Teacher gives you all the feels, okay? So this is definitely a recommendation that everyone needs to read because I will not shut up about it, obviously. Another Britney C. Cherry that I don't own a physical copy of yet is Eleanor and Grey. So this book starts out with Eleanor and Grey, I believe in high school, and them meeting at a party. Grey is this popular, I want to say jock if I'm not mistaken, and Eleanor is kind of like this wallflower. They end up uh, striking up a conversation at a party and they become friends. They find that they're able to talk about things that they're not really able to talk about with other people, with each other. I believe both of them are having difficulties in their family um, and they're really able to connect over that. Um, but then Eleanor's mother ends up passing away and her father moves them across the country. This was right on the verge when Eleanor and Gray were finally gonna be together. And that ended up not happening because she had to move and m live with her dad, you know? So it's years later, Eleanor is a grown woman and so is Gray. And so Eleanor decides to go back to the town that she used to live in and wants to find a job. She ends up finding a nanny job and does not realize that it is for Gray's children. In the um, time that they've been apart, Gray has met a woman, fell in love with her, married her, had two girls with her, and then that woman ended up dying. There's a lot of trauma and a lot of grief still in their family because of this loss, especially with the daughters. Gray is a very different person than who he was in high school with Eleanor. This sweet, like goofy guy is now this stoic grump and Eleanor kind of helps him realize the the guy he used to be and that he doesn't have to be so serious all the time and it's okay to grieve. It is beautiful, okay? I love this. I also love the incorporation of children in here because um, Eleanor does become their nanny and um, it was just amazing. I of course have to mention a Colleen Hoover in this video because she's like the queen of making you cry. So I will mention all your perfects. I honestly almost DNF'd this book, almost didn't finish it because of how uncomfortable and sad and emotional it was making me. There's a big trigger warning in here for infertility and that is honestly a really big fear of mine and this talks about it plenty. And so it made me super emotional and oh, it, it broke me. So our uh, characters in here, Quint and Graham, they meet one day because they find their boyfriend and girlfriend, like their Quint and Graham are in their own relationships, right? Qu Graham has a girlfriend, Quinn has a boyfriend. Quinn's boyfriend apparently is with Graham's girlfriend and they're cheating on Quinn and Graham with each other. And so they end up meeting while they're going to, while they're finding their, like they're finding their significant other, like they track them down because they think they're cheating on them. And then they find each other outside the room of the hotel. And they end up sitting against the wall and chatting about what happened and just life and everything. And um, that's kind of like their meet cute moment. And um, so this book flashes back and forth to when the then they fell in love, like at the point that I just talked about and onward and where they are now in their lives, where they are on the verge of divorce um, because of some things that have happened to them. Luckily, I was able to push through, but this book will make you upset. It will make you uncomfortable. It will make you incredibly sad. If you are very triggered by the discussion and descriptiveness that comes with infertility issues, I don't think I will recommend this book to you because it's a lot. It is a lot, so please be aware before you go into this one. Next, we have Withering Hope by Layla Hagen. This is a survival romance. This is about Amy and Tristan. Now, this is one of two books, two, one of two books that I've read where I did not care about the cheating, did not bother me. And this is coming from a person who is a hard, hard no for cheating in books. This is the exception because both of them think that there is no possible way that they could get back to civilization, okay? They think that they are stuck here forever and they will never see the outside world ever again, okay? So Amy is on her way to her destination wedding. I believe it's in South America somewhere. And Tristan is the pilot of the plane. They're on this plane alone together, by the way. It's a private plane. The plane ends up crashing in the Amazon rainforest and, um, the two of them are having to survive together to live because this Amazon rainforest obviously is ginormous. There is no civilization. They can't find anybody. They are living by themselves for months and for years trying to live on in, in this situation. And it obviously is not something that happens automatically of them getting together because Amy obviously loves her fiance and wants to marry him and is on her way to her wedding. So it takes quite a long time and Amy has to get through a lot of guilt 
before she fully accepts this relationship with Tristan. The part that made me cry was the epilogue ending, so I'll just leave it at that. But overall, this book um, definitely gets emotional at times, especially with the cheating and the emotionalness of it. Um, I feel like this is like an exception to like the cheating thing. If you want to try a cheating book, try this. The, the the only thing is like the guy she's cheated on isn't in the like isn't in the situation like at all you don't see him on page like at all so i do recommend this one if you are unsure just try it out next is royally yours by emma chase this is the prequel book to the royally series which i really recommend reading the first three books they're right here royally screwed royally match and royally endowed and then this one is about the grandmother of the people right here this cup like these three books they have a grandmother who's like the queen of wesco this is her story of how she fell in love with her husband so it goes back in time to when she met her husband lenora is the queen of this country and she needs to get married like her council is telling her she needs to marry so she has her best friend who she feels basically only platonic feelings for to be her husband she's like we'll just be an amazing husband and wife together and we'll be we'll be good you know and so she's just thinking about them having this amazing friendship and relationship when they're married like she's not expecting this giant passion you know something tragic happens to where edward her best friend's brother has to come in town by some means and reasons lenora and edward her best friend's brother have to get married instead there's a lot of grief and sadness and tragedy that comes in here the reason why i don't recommend picking this book up first is because you know what happens to this couple in the first three books. When you read the first three books, Lenora is alone. Her husband has died. So you know when you read this book, he's not alive in these books. This book ends in an H-E-A. Don't worry, he does not die in this book. Don't worry, that's in La La Land, not on page. You know, we'll pretend it doesn't exist, you know? So there's no, none of that. <laughs> this book, all these books ended in H-E-A. So I really recommend this one, but please read the first three in the series first. Next, I have On the Way to You by Candy Steiner. Cooper is this woman who just wants to leave her very small town and I believe go to college in Washington, but that's a very far distance away and she is kind of living on scraps at this point. She's trying to save up money to go. And so while she's working at this diner, a man comes to order and they end up getting in a conversation. His name's Emery. And he notices that I think there's a trip tip jar on the counter, like saying like help fund Cooper's trip to Washington or something like that. And he's like, oh, you want to go to Washington? That's super interesting because I'm actually driving there right now, um, going somewhere. Do you want to come with me? And I'll just drive you there. At first she says no, because she doesn't know this guy who's a stranger. Um, but the more that she thinks about it, she's like, this is probably my only opportunity to go and so she gets back to him says yes and they embark on this road trip across the country to washington emory however is a very stoic broody gruff man who has a lot of secrets to him please be aware there's a bunch of trigger warnings in here especially for depression and attempted suicide it, it's a lot and also there's disability representation with cooper um she is an amputee um i believe uh, her knee down she has a prosthetic leg um, and there's a cute little doggo that she brings with her on the trip. So her dog comes with her. Um, but this book, it's really emotional at times because of the trigger warnings that I just talked about. Emery has a lot of rage in him and a lot of sadness and it's very overwhelming at times. So please be aware of those things. Next is The Simple Wilds by K.A. Tucker. This is the romance between Kala and Jonah. Kala is a city girl and she decides to visit her father after getting a call from one of his friends saying that he's very ill and he lives in Alaska. So she goes to Alaska, she meets Jonah, who is one of her father's pilots for his plane company. And it's an immediate enemies to lovers. They don't like each other. And long story short, they end up falling in love. Obviously, enemies to lovers, you know, you know. Um, the emotional aspect in here comes with Kala and her father. Um, if you have daddy issues, this book will wreck you, okay? Because that's definitely what Kala has. <laughs> And um, she ends up figuring out who her father really is because she hasn't seen him since she was a little girl. Figuring out who this guy is and why he's been away for so long and why he hasn't he come for her. It gets really sad and emotional, so please be aware of this. Next, I have Within These Walls by J.L. Berg, one of my favorites. <laughs> this is about Lila and Jude. Lila has a heart condition to a point where she is constantly in the hospital. And Jonah just so happens to be one of the night nurses on watch for her during this most recent trip to the hospital. And they end up forming a friendship and it develops into something more. There's a lot of 
um, things that Jonah is going through because at the beginning of this book, you witness his fiance dying. Like it's like the first chapter, so I'm not spoiling it. She died in that hospital and he is so overcome with grief and doesn't want to let her go. So he starts to almost essentially live in the hospital and try to stay in that hospital as much as possible because he can't leave, like he physically can't leave. And so he's trying to get through his past love and the trauma and the grief that he's gone through. Through him getting to know Lila and and seeing how this girl who has gone through so much still be a happy, positive person is making him realize new things he's never thought about before and he starts to fall in love with her. And so there's a lot of different aspects in here that I just loved um, and uh, this book made me sob uncontrollably so there's that <laughs> and lastly i do want to mention redeeming love by francine rivers because this one did make me sob too i have a reading vlog i'll link it down below of me reading this book with spoilers by the way this is a christian romance book so if that's not your thing i totally understand um that's kind of why i saved it for last in case you don't want to watch uh, watch the rest of this video you can click off now this is essentially kind of like a re retelling or a story inspired by hosea in the bible the story of hosea in the bible and um it just deals with a lot of heart ache heartbreak trauma and learning to trust in god so um i cried a lot in here especially with our heroine angel being very stubborn and i cried over finally when she relented and learned that um someone can love you no matter what horrible things you've done in your past or what horrible things have been done for you just because you've gone through these horrible things like sexual assault for example that's a big trigger in here sexual assault doesn't mean that you are any less of a person so there's also a movie out for this book right now um so if that's your jam you can go check it out. I haven't watched it yet, so. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romance books that made me sob uncontrollably. Please let me know down below if these books uh, elicited the same response out of you. <laughs> I'd love to know. Also, let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, leave me the crying emoji. <laughs> but anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye, y'all.